Hi, today we're going to work on an example of rotational, pull, of rotational motion. This is a, one of the classic examples in this field, and it's a pulley with a mass hanging from one side. So it looks just like this. Now, the twist on this from what we've been talking about in class, uh, from what we've talked about previously in this course, is that the pulley has a mass. The pulley, in fact, has a mass of m sub p, and it has a radius of r sub p. And because it has a mass, you know that it's going to take some effort to cause it to rotate. So I'm just drawing the radius on here right now. And then the block down here has a mass of m sub p. So now, what we want to do is calculate the acceleration of the block. So a block, just like that, which, of course, we know it's going to be accelerating downwards because gravity is pulling it down. Now, what's going on when the pulley has mass is that it is going to overall slow down the acceleration of the block itself. And the more massive the pulley is compared to the block, the slower the acceleration is going to be. And so we can work this out, but first we have to, you know, we have to take a few steps before we work it out. And so the first thing we're going to do is draw some free body diagrams, because that's the first thing that we do for everything. And of course, you know, the important thing to recall is that for each body, the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration, and the sum of all torques is equal to I alpha, where I is the moment of inertia, and alpha is the angular acceleration. And, of course, A is the linear acceleration. Um, okay, and so let's do the pulley first. So with the pulley, just the pulley, first off we have a force pulling upward, which is F support. We have the weight of the pulley pulling downward, which is just the mass of the pulley times gravity. And then there's a third force, which is the tension of the rope. And that pulls down off on the right side, and that pulls down with the tension of T. And so if I were to write the forces down, I know that the pulley is not accelerating. It's staying still. So F support, and I'm going to shorten that to F sub S, minus the weight of the pulley minus tension has to be equal to zero. Because again, the pulley is fixed in place. It's not going anywhere. But then, let's talk about the torques. And the torque, the only torque, so now let's just take a quick look at this. The support here, the force of the support is acting directly on the center, you know, is directing on the center of the pulley, and so there's no net torque. The weight also acts on the center of mass of the pulley, so there's no torque. The tension acts off to the side at some radius, r sub p. So there is, in fact, a torque. So what we can do is just write down the sum of the torques. And that's going to be R pulley times tension, because that's the only one, and it's equal to I alpha, and we're going to call that alpha P, because it's the angular acceleration of the pulley. And the moment of inertia, well, we'll get to that later. So the next thing we're going to do is draw the free body diagram for the block. And remember, the block has a string being uh, pulled from it, so it feels a tension upwards, the tension that we talked about before, and it has a weight pulling it downwards, and that's m sub b times gravity. And so for the block, and then when we look at this, both of these uh, forces are acting on the center of the block, so there is no net torque. So what I'm going to do is, for convenience, I'm going to define this direction downward as being the positive direction. So 
Now let's write down the sum of forces. The sum of the forces, uh, oops, the sum of the forces will be, uh, again, downward is positive, so we're saying weight, or m sub b times gravity is going to be positive then. Tension is going the other direction, so we subtract it, and it's equal to the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block. And again, positive is down just for convenience. And then, also for the block, since all of the forces act on the center of mass, the sum of the torques are equal to zero. So, now what we need to do is look at our equations. So we know that for the pulley, the sum of torques is equal to zero. So, uh, I'm sorry, the sum of forces is equal to zero. So we're just going to write down the sum of the torques. And so that means that we know that R sub P times tension is equal to I pulley times alpha pulley. And I should say that the moment of inertia, since this is a solid disk, is one half M P R P squared. Now, for the block, the torques are set to zero, so the sum of forces is m sub block times gravity minus the tension is equal to m sub block times the acceleration of the block. But the problem here is that we now have two equations, but we have three unknowns. The first unknown is the tension, which appears in both of these, which appears in both of the equations. The second unknown is the angular acceleration, which appears in the equation for the torque on the pulley, and the third equation or the third unknown is the acceleration of the block, which is up here uh, in the set, sum of forces on the block. So that gives us three uh, three unknowns and two equations. So how do we resolve this? Well, the solution is that the block acceleration and the pulley angular acceleration are related. And so that tells us that, oops, A block is equal to R pulley times alpha pulley. And the way we know this is by just drawing the picture and looking at the picture. Because here is my pulley, here is my block, that's hanging from it by some rope. And so as the pulley accelerates downwards, then the block is going to spin and it's going to be accelerating in that direction with some angular acceleration. And you can see that just from looking at the picture that A and alpha are tied together. And so what we can do from that then is, going back one slide, say that A is equal to R alpha. And with that, we've now taken two of those unknowns and just turned them into sing a single unknown. So now what we can do is rewrite our equations. We can say that R pulley times tension is equal to I alpha, but that's going to be one half mp rp squared, because that's the moment of inertia of the cylinder, times alpha, which is just a block over r pulley. And so, just to be 100% clear, that is the moment of inertia of, this, of the, the pulley, and this is the angular acceleration of the pulley. So then, what we can do for the block is just simply say, um, let's see, so what can we simply say? We can simply say that, uh, oh, and by the way, with this equation, we can divide through, because if you look, there's an R pulley over here, there's an R pulley squared on the right-hand side, and then there's an R pulley right here, and so this one cancels out with one of these, and then the R pulley on the left and the remaining R pulley on the right 
cancel out. So then I get, overall, tension is one half m pulley a block. And then I can write my second equation and say m pulley times gravity minus tension is equal to m block a block. And I didn't mean to write that there. So, okay. So now what we can do is go ahead and actually solve this because we have one expression for T and A, and then we have a second expression that relates T and A, and we can just take our two equations and two unknowns and go ahead and solve that. So the next thing to do, and I'm just rewriting these equations in a way that makes them a little easier to see, uh, is now we're going to talk about what happens in the limits. And so in the limit where the mass of the block is much, much greater than the mass of the pulley, we see that the tension goes to zero because the mass of the block ends up dominating here. And so we see that T goes to zero and A just goes to gravity. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not T. Um, this is the acceleration. And then, in the limit where, and essentially you could think of this as the pulley has very little moment of inertia compared, and, and very little mass compared to the block, so the block completely dominates the system. And so, in the circumstance where the pulley is essentially massless, the block is going to accelerate at um, gravity, and there's nothing pulling back on the string, so there's no tension. Now, the other limit is where m block is much, much less than m pulley. And you could think of this as, you know, a very tiny mass hanging off of a very heavy wheel of some sort. And in this case, what you see from looking up here is that the tension is going to go to the mass of uh, the block times gravity, or in other words, the weight of the block. And then what we also see is that the acceleration goes to zero. Because, coming back up here, when m pulley is much greater than m block, the denominator dominates here. And then what you see is that it's essentially, uh, I'm sorry, that for the tension, the mass of the block is really, really small. So the mass of the pulley is the only thing that matters. All right. Well, that was my explanation of this problem. I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you.